So the value and demand for video editing skills in this era is high like never before and there has never been a better time than this to actually start learning it. As in this video, I'm going to be showing you all you need to know to get started with Premiere Pro as a complete beginner. Also stick till the end of the video as I will be sharing most of its editing tips and tricks throughout this video. So without wasting any further dues, let's just get straight into our computers and let's get you started with editing. So first thing you want to do is to open up a new project inside Premiere and it will take you to this tab where you can set the title of your video and also where you want the project to be stored on your computer. Click OK and this is what you should be seeing when you start your first new project. So the first thing you should know is how you can import the clips. Now before we import our clips, we have to make sure that we stay organized. Staying organized is very important in editing because if you just throw around all your clips into your project panel just like that, you may have hard time finding a specific clip at specific time. Now to stay organized, we will create pins. And to do that, we are going to click on this bin icon over here. And that is going to be creating a new folder. And we are going to rename this as camera clips. Now here we will be only adding the shots that are taken from the camera and we will create another folder called drone clips for drone shots. And also we will be creating two more bins accordingly and I'm going to name it as music and sound effects. Okay, so now that we have these four bins, what we can do next is click inside certain bin that you want to import your certain files. For example, now I will be only importing drone shots in the drone folder so that we find those easily and I'm going to only add camera shots in camera folder. You can also change the view of this panel here by clicking on this. So you have to pick what works best for you and what you feel comfortable with. So the next thing that we want to do is to create a sequence. So basically in sequence, you are setting the frame rate and resolution of your clip, which you're going to be editing with. And to do that, you're going to right click here and click on new item and new sequence. Now, this is something that you will find after you click on sequence. So we are just going to click on settings. So you just have to set this to custom and then for frames per second, I want to pick 23.976, which is kind of standard. And then for frame size, so there are different frame sizes. For example, if you want to make a horizontal video, suppose let's say for Instagram Reels, it's 1080 into 1920. And if you're dealing with 4K, it's usually 3840 into 2160. But for now, I will set this to 1920 into 1080 as we are dealing with a 1080 pixel video with this one. And you have to make sure that this is on square pixels and you have to make sure that you click on maximum bit depth and maximum render quality and we will click OK. So as we can see that now we have a sequence. So the next thing we are going to do is to select the clip that we want and double click on it. And as you can see, it will appear here in our source panel. So let's say I want to start this video over here. So what you can do is you can either press I on your keyboard or you can go over to this icon and click on it. And that's going to set an in point. And then I can just scroll through a little bit and maybe about here, I want this to end. And again, either you can click on this icon here, which is the out point, or you can just press O on your keyboard and then drag it to our timeline. And I will be doing the same process for the rest of the video. A few moments later. As you can see, all of the clips that we want are in the timeline. So the timeline is where you will be doing all your cuts and main edits of your video. And the way you can zoom on the timeline is by dragging this or you can just press plus to zoom in and minus to zoom out. So now that we have all these clips on our timeline, I'm going to be showing you the tools that we will be using a lot in our editing workflow. So the first one that we are going to be talking about is the selection tool. So basically in selection tool, you can drag things around, change the effects control of any clip, which I'm going to be talking about in a little bit. And you get that tool by clicking V on your keyboard or clicking on this icon over here. So the next tool that I personally use a lot is this. This is the track select forward tool. Now let's say that you want to move this entire clips on the timeline. So what basically you can do is you can just select this tool. And when you click on this, it will automatically select all of the clips and you can move all clips at once. 
So the next tool that we will be talking about is the razor tool. So with this tool, basically you can cut in between any clips. So let's say that you have gap in between these two clips while editing. What you can do is click in between the gap and press delete. And that is automatically going to fill the gap between these two clips. This process is also called ripple delete. And this is quite useful and I use it a lot. So now I'm going to show you how you can speed up or slow down different clips. So let's say you want to speed up this clip. Now to do that, what you can do is right click on the clip, click on speed slash duration and here you can speed up the clip. Now for example, let's say I want to speed it up to 200% and then I'm just going to click OK and boom. You can see that now it is sped up. If I want to reverse this clip, I can just do the same thing. I will just right click on the clip, go to speed duration. But this time I'm going to check on this reverse speed and now as you can see that the clip is reversed. Super useful and I personally use this effect a lot. Awesome. Now let's add some effects and transitions to our videos. So what you want to do is click on this arrow mark on the project panel, select effects and here you can find all the effects and transitions that are default. So let's say you want to add a transition. Click on this little arrow beside video transition. Let's say we want to add an effect called dip to black which they use in most of the movies. Now to add that, double click on the dissolve, select the dip to black effect and drag it in between these two videos. As you can see, you have this cinematic looking transitions ready. Now you can also change the duration of the transition by just grabbing this effect and dragging it in or out. Now let's say you want to add effects to your video. And to do that, again go to effects, but this time we are going to double click on the video effects. Now let's add a blur effect to our video. And to do that, double click on the blur and sharpen, select the Gaussian blur and drag it on our clip. Now as you can see it didn't change anything. No need to panic. Just go to effects control on top left here on the source panel. Scroll down and you will find Gaussian effect here. Now effects control is where you control all the effects of the video. If you go under Gaussian blur and increase the blurriness you can see that it adds the blur effect to our video. Also make sure that you click on repeat edge pixels so you won't have these black edges. Okay so now I'm going to show you the quickest way of how you can add text to your video. We're gonna just press T on our keyboard or click on this T icon and then click on the actual video and just type the text that you want to add in the video. So I'm gonna put word Karnataka in here for example because these were shot in Chikmangalur, Karnataka. So you can also change the look of the text by just going to effects panel and, and click on this drop down arrow beside text and as you scroll down you see various options. Here you can change the fonts and down here you can change the size of the font and you can also change the color of font by just clicking on fill and select your favorite color. And that's pretty much all you need to know to begin with. Good. So now I'm going to show you how you can add some music and sound effects to your video. So let's go into these folders that we just created for sound effects and music and drag and drop it into our audio channels right here. And boom, it's that simple. If I make it larger, you can see that now we have music here and to change the volume of that, you can either click on it, go to the effects control tab and then click on volume and make it lower by lowering the level and higher by hiring the level. Or you can also just go here and lower it by dragging down with your mouse or your trackpad. And then over here, you can see how many decimals it's increasing or decreasing. And same goes with the sound effects. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a little bit of basic color grading of how you can color grade your videos and change look of it. Again, I won't be going much deeper with this one as that might sound confusing if you are a beginner. I'm going to go into color section here. As you can see that we have bunch of options here that says editing, color, effects and audio. I personally like to use color tab while color grading. Now once you click on color, you will find this Lumetri panel on the right. Now I'm not gonna go into super advanced stuff right now. But I'm just gonna show you very basic color grading to make your footage look a bit better. So what we're gonna do now is go to our Lumetri colors and play with some colors. So first here you will find temperature where if you drag it to the left it will turn cold or blue and if you drag it to the right it turns warm or yellow. Next comes the tint. Now in tint if you drag it to left it turns into green and if you drag it to the right it turns into magenta. Now exposure defines the brightness and darkness of the video. If you drag it to the left it makes your video dark and if you drag it to the right it makes it brighter. So we are also gonna add some contrast to add that punch to our video. So highlights targets the bright part of the videos. Let's also bring down some whites. And I think I'm also going to bring down some blacks. So now we are done with the basic color correction. Now here in creative panel you can adjust the saturation, vibrance 
and here where it says look if you click on that you can find default LUTs by Premiere and you can also import your LUTs if you have any. Now when you come down to curves below RGB curve I want you to create two points over here and bring this down and bring this a little bit up. So this creates a S like looking curve. So this hack is also called S curve that adds that cinematic contrast to your videos instantly. As you can see before and after. This works great for most of your videos. I highly recommend you to try these as it will make it stand out. Now I'm actually not gonna go super detail about rest of these as they deserve a separate video. So subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for in-depth color grading video where I'll be covering all of this. Okay, so now I'm gonna use all these exact techniques that I've shown you guys and put together and make a quick cinematic video. And then I'm going to show you how you can export your videos and the best export settings for your video. I hope you like the video that I've made by just using the techniques that we've been discussing on. But now let's get to the best export settings for your video so that we have less compression and more quality. Now here first thing you want to do is to change the format to H264 and preset to YouTube 4K for max quality. And down here check on the maximum render quality and under video scroll down and check on render maximum depth. And keep scrolling until you find this bitrate encoding and change it to CBR. Now CBR is constant bitrate and for target bitrate set it around 30 for best quality. You can also change the path where you want the video to be exported if you just click on this here and you can set it to wherever you want it to be. Click export and boom it will export your video to the location that you've set to. So that's it for this video. I really hope you learned something new from this. If you did, please do subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. And now that you are all set with this software, you can check out my other videos where I will be sharing most of its editing tips and tricks to make your editing life a lot simpler. Also, I will be making content related to camera comparisons, some of creative ways of how you can use your phone to get cinematic shots. And trust me, you don't want to miss that.